Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be in the world. I'm Sarah Jane, and this is Gift of Healing TV. I am delighted to welcome my guest, Julia, Julia, oh, <laughs> my tongue's got tied, Julia Stubbe. Julia, welcome, and thank you for agreeing to join us tonight. Oh, I'm so grateful to be here, Sarah. This is, I'm excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> that's the idea let me let the, the title of our program this evening is what are implants and portals and so julia is going to be sharing on that but let me tell you a little bit about julia first and then i'll get her to tell you a little bit about herself as well julia is a gifted energy intuitive channeler and teacher specializing in assisting others to wholeness through self-empowerment Using a holistic approach, she inter interweaves many healing modalities to find a deeper understanding of physical and emotional dis-ease. By peeling away the layers of surface challenges and blockages, an understanding and realization of issues through this healing enlightenment are exposed, allowing deeper issues to come to light. This approach facilitates healing transformation through hands-on healing and holistic counseling. She channels multiple galactic and multidimensional beings, sharing energetic transmissions that clear old programming and activate creative DNA coding, elevating your vibration and frequency to support you on your journey and of, of, of unfoldment. An extraordinary spirit her journey began more than 25 years ago. It was through her own powerful personal transformation through energy healing that brought her to share this profound work with others. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> it, still, it still blows my mind. It's like... <laughs> of, of, I think with all of us it does. Yeah, because it's like, I, I, I can't imagine, because it's like I came, you know, when we are incarnated, we choose our lifetime, our lessons of what we want to learn here. And um, so, and then many of us say, oh, who wants to sign up for a little despair and abuse? Oh, pick me, pick me, let me pick that. And I picked a family that, oh my gosh, it was like, I got, I got the winning ticket as far as that goes. And I am really grateful to have had that opportunity because what that did was I tried um, just regular psychology, and talk therapy and that got me to a, a, a little bit because it's like I realized some certain things about myself but what really changed for me is I was going to a massage therapist for um, I had been in a car accident in March of 1980 and both her hips need to be replaced so she sent me to another massage therapist uh, Van Bacone and she's out of Reading Pennsylvania and not only is she a bulldozer of a massage therapist who gets in there, she's also a shamanic healer. And she touched my heart chakra. And the pain literally shot through my back and down my tailbone. And that, at that moment, I knew I was in the right place. I was in the right opportunity to be able to start healing myself. So for me, that is where it all changed because I embraced the work. And it was scary. Some of it was like really, really scary to look at because you look at that side inside yourself. So through all those years, I have been working on myself. So like if I get triggered or a mirror shows up or something bothers me, it's like I go within now. It's like I used to say, it's like when you go on those dating sites, you know, and they say, oh, I don't want anybody that has any baggage. Well, I used to have suitcases of it and stuff would pop out and I would just like close that close that suitcase and it's like, I'm not dealing with that. Every once in a while I'll deal with something. Now if something pops out or pops up and shows up, I work with it. So what that enables me to do is to keep my channel really clear so that when I'm working with a client or working with someone else, my information that I'm getting from source is clear and it's not convoluted with my stuff as far as that goes. And I also, one of the other things that I, I, and, one of my missions here on this planet that my team has showed me is I transmute energy for the planet as well as the beings of the planet. So in doing that and being such a high level empath, I've had to learn ways of 
reading energy for myself and clearing for myself, creating shields to be able to focus and survive and stay grounded in this planet to hold my light. So that's kind of all of it, but none of it, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I think, I think what I'd like to start with in the way of a question is because there will be some people and we've got people live, but, and if you've got any questions, folks, please ask them, please, please do. But I think, there will be people who maybe haven't even started their journey or at the very beginning of their journey. And they will be interested in knowing what some of the terminology actually means. And so I think it's really important to share that, not assume everybody understands. So I remember within that, you talked, um, you talked about mirror. Yeah, so a mirror. A mirror. mirror. So if something shows up in somebody and it bothers you and it irritates you, a mirror is like, it's the universe shining back on you, something that's within you that is giving you the opportunity to heal that. So I consider a trigger and a mirror pretty close together. I know um, years ago I went to a retreat and it was on mirrors and 24 women, six days, oh my gosh. And there was this woman across as soon as i walked in across that it's like i don't know what it was but she bothered me it's like i had no idea what it was i didn't really know her but it's like i knew she was my mirror i knew i had a lot to learn from her because it was within me in myself that needed to heal those things so i went up to her and i started off with i just want to thank you for being here here that you're here because you're my mirror <laughs> and i don't know why but i'm gonna find out and I'm going to take a look at those things about you that are within me that are bothering me. Does that make sense, Sarah? Oh, it makes perfect sense to me. But I think it's really important. Obviously, I hope that 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 explains it to people who maybe didn't understand it. Um, and hi, Stan. <laughs> Just to know you are being ignored. OK, so we, we said portal for implants and portals. So should we go into a what are implants and portals? okay I, yeah that. they're two different they're two different things yes. i'd like to start with implants or tags um implants so we've all whether we want to believe it or not and for those maybe you don't you don't believe it um we've had in previous lifetimes we've had things physically injected into our field like i don't want to get into it now but like even with the vaccines the chemtrails today there's nano and there's ai that's coming in and that's coming into our physical bodies so like in the lemurian times the atlantean times starseed times and mu times these were implanted into our physical bodies to keep us from moving forward and now they're showing up in our etheric field and that could be our etheric field within our chakras within our digestive system within our glandular systems and what they do is they're still holding that energy that is keeping us from moving forward so it can show up that way as far as that goes there's also the implants that we actually have today like i said that come are coming through the chemtrails i call that a lot of the ai the nano technology that's here does that does that answer does do you think that's a, enough information for people to understand sarah or would you like to add something to that Oh, we've lost your video. I can hear you, but we've lost your video. I go in and out. It was frozen. You, you froze and then <laughs> now we've lost your video altogether. Do you want to try turning your video? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, good. Do you want to try turning your video, your camera off and then back on again? It might be to do with the signal. Folks, technology is doing what technology does um and especially at this time with everybody using it because they can't actually go and see people well, so if all right i've tried okay um, and it's just i'm i'm in the dark <laughs> but if, if you leave your picture up and i won't take i have tried taking me down and just see because whether no we really haven't got got you um which i'm really sorry we haven't we can't see see you but we can hear you 
that's okay. the most well, I'll, I'll I'll go and check and see if I, I show up later again. I have yes. everything I have everything else off on my machine. So yeah. I don't know quite what else to do. Hmm. Well, uh, sh short of you coming out and coming back in again, which of course I don't want to lose you altogether. <laughs> yeah. So let's just talk. Let's just chat. Anyway. <laughs> so implants, great portals. So portals are like doorways. Um, so they can be in your house. They might come through a mirror. They might be in the closet. They're also a, portals or doorways that are within you. So you may be channeling something through you as well, as far as that goes. So they can show up. Sometimes you're portaling like high vibrational beings. You're a channel for that. But other times you aren't. They're lower vibrational. And so with that being said, it, it's just like if it's an energetic doorway. And a lot of time what causes it is a change in the energies as far as that goes. I have a one that opened up for me at the house that I when I lived up in Pennsylvania. My son had a, a friend and she was having some kind of energy issues connection with their dad and stuff like that. And we were on the couch in my living room. And after she left, my cat went wacko and started peeing where, where we were on that couch. Well, here, just by talking to her energetically about stuff, it opened a portal there. And he was like, not happy with what this was. So it's like, I had to identify it because I was like, what is going on? Because this is where I really became aware of what we can create, what can be created so quickly and so simply without us even giving it a second thought. And so I was like, and I could communicate with my cat. And I'm like, okay, show me where the portal is. There's something here. Show, and he went right to that sofa where he was peeing. I'm like, all right, so where did that come from? And I figured it out and I closed that. So how do you close a portal? So with intention, you can close it, but there's a tools, there's tools that I like to use um, and like, and with our imagination, we can create the seeds of reality. So if you believe what you're creating is real, it is real. Okay. With that being said, so I like to work with what I call lighthouses, energetic lighthouses. And I work with what I call frequency nine. And that's something I learned through matrix energetics, one of the modalities I studied, and that's the spiritual cleanser. So I have, I put these lighthouses throughout the house and it's like, I asked them to run this, this energy, this frequency nine energy at a higher vibration and to make sure that the portals stay closed and lower vibrational beings are uncomfortable when they come in. So that's one of the things that I use. And it's like, if there's, I've actually recommended to clients to put them underneath the bed or underneath the chair in a closet, different heights they can be. You should see I'm doing all these hand motions and it's like I'm looking and I'm not moving because there's my picture. I'm going to try the video one more time, see if I show back up. And I'm still not there. Okay. Oh, that is that's, such a shame. <laughs> but anyway, um, with that being said, that's a portal. So you can, um, if you channel, if you channel higher vibrational beings or other beings at all, you are creating a portal or a doorway for them to channel through you. So it's good to really set intention of what you're allowing to channel through you. So I have a gatekeeper, what I call my gatekeeper, and I have an agreement with my gatekeeper that only higher vibrations of divine love or higher are able to channel through me. Um, otherwise, I get these portals in my body and I still get portals in my body. I'm not saying I don't. But when I'm channeling, I know that whatever's coming through is for me. But I might be energetically um, having a conversation with somebody and somehow it gets in through my heart chakra. It comes in through my solar plexus. So how do you know if you have a portal? Well, there's different ways to do it when you're empathic. And this goes for the implants, too, is you can ask yourself that question. Are there any portals of lower vib that are bringing in lower vibration? And you'll either you either get you just either get heavy where it feels that there's something there, or you might get a yes or a no. Some of you work with pendulums, so you could you know find your yes or no there if you have it, and from there, there you go. And you can ask yourself, do you know you find your yes or no? Am am I carrying any portals in my body right now? 
And then what I, what I ask myself or I ask my clients is like, what number? So how many do you think, how many are you getting? And I just trust whatever number shows up. And sometimes they have more than one opening. So sometimes the numbers can be a little bit different. And what I bring in is I bring in what I call the, I call it the flower of life um, disco ball which is sacred geometry and it's of a really higher dimensional. So I bring that into really into my etheric fields and into my body to really light up and see what I have so that I can have my team escort any implants that these beings have come through the portal have brought in. And we close, I ask them to close up the entrances to the portal. And then I, envision this beautiful liquid gold or liquid blue, whatever I'm being guided to, to come and seal those portals so they can't be reopened again. So there's those kind of portals um, and implants that come through. There's also like what I call um, J seals or the Jehovah seals that are on the, that the Anuki put in on the, the earth. So when portals or seals or implants are put in the earth, we are a mirror for the earth. So many times we also pick that up as well, if that makes any sense. It's like, it's really out there as far as that goes. But like, if we clear our J seals as far as that goes and go through, because they're on the left side of our body, not only are we clearing for ourselves, but we're also working with the planet and working with the seals that are implanted there as well. So it's really, when you're working on your body, there's etheric or physical you're also working with the earth at the same time does that make sense oh it makes perfect sense because you know what we're, we're learning is work with yourself first mm -hmm. take care of yourself first love yourself first respect yourself first when you take care of you when you love you you are raising that vibration, that energy, because you can then bring much more of that to others. But you are raising the vibration for yourself, for everybody else, and for the planet. Absolutely. That's the whole thing. That's why it's like when people say, well, what's my purpose? Well, your purpose is you first, is yeah. to really love yourself, self-love. Look at look at those triggers. Look at those things that are showing up that are keeping you from moving forward. Once you have that, it's like then then spirit will give you more things to look at as far as that goes. But just in doing that, even if that's all you did was worked on yourself, you are raising the vibration of the planet in doing so. You if and if that's all you if and you if you think you need something grand, you don't need something grand because raising the vibration, your vibration, those around you, um, being kind, being kind to others raises your vibration, raises other vibration. In turn, it's a ripple effect. You have no idea where your ripples are going, how far they travel, and who they're touching. So that is so amazing in itself. You're your mission here doesn't have to be huge or grand because we're all huge and grand. Everything we do is huge and grand. We all affect it in different ways. We just have been programmed on this planet in this 3D dimension and 4D dimension that we're in and out of that we have to have something to show for it. We have to be able to, it has to be tangible. We have to see it. We have to be wide known or spread. We don't have to be all that to be effective in raising the vibration and the consciousness of this planet. We just have to really love ourselves to start with that. And then and then once we love ourselves, it's a lot easier to be kind to others and love others. Absolutely. Now, Stan has actually put a question up here. Okay. And he says, I seem to draw attention from negative people who will go rather out of their way to create issues for me. Is this because of implants or mirror versus a uh, mirror versus combination? It, it could be a combination. Most of the time it's a mirror. So what you do is when, when something comes up like that and you want to work with a mirror, Stan, you said his name was, right? Yes. I, I, I'm waving to you. Hi, Stan. Anyway, so what you can do is write, like this person makes me feel this and write out what is actually happening. And then 
like whoever that person's name is, cross that person's name out and put your name and see what triggers you of what there is like, Oh, I actually have this. I need to heal this from when I was seven and I need to work on that because that's really my trigger. So we're attracting that. I know the universe for me would send me oh, people that would make me to the point where I'd almost cry because it was like they would, it was like, I felt like they were attacking me and this and that. But what it was, what it, once I figured out that it was something within me that needed to heal, I could actually clear, clear that and really be whole. And, and I, it just makes a big difference. So if you can acknowledge, so first of all, you want to thank those people who are bringing that awesome energy into your life and be in gratitude, no matter how hard that sounds. It's like, you really want to start there and then take a look at what, what is it that is making me feel this way that I can really look at within myself. Um, where I find with the implants comes is they may show up energetically from keeping you from moving forward more so, but there's also implants that may bring in, and I'm just being told to say this, bring in thoughts of depression or suicide as far as that goes and just change your programming. So they're, they, in, they infiltrate that. When I do implants like i do because there's nano in the 3d which is in our, in our in our physical but there's also that nano or ai that reaches into the etheric level and what i do is is i trust this some of you may be able to see know or feel energy but just use your imagination and i'll say okay so all the etheric nano that's in my i'll start with my brain that's in my brain that isn't for my highest of highest good of the higher vibration of divine love or higher. I want you to light up right now. And you may see little blue lights or pink lights or whatever, however it shows up, or just might see sparkles and they, or they might look like they're black spots. And what you want to do is you want to intentionally deactivate. So I want to deactivate and shut them down. And you can go through your body that way. You can use a pendulum to say, is there anything here that I need to clear? Is there still something here as far as doing that goes? Does that make, did, did you feel a difference in that when you did that? Sarah, did you do that with me? I, I actually became aware of lots of little sparks. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't see things. I don't hear things. It, it was just a sense of, there's lots of little sparks. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's just knowing. So it can show up in different ways. So it's like we all yeah. we all have that gift to be able to know what energy is. But some of us see it. Some of us feel it. Some of us just know it's there. And so you just have to trust. So that's why I'm saying use your imagination. Like imagine what it would look like. And that will the seeds of reality. That will also help you grow your intuitiveness by doing that. Did that answer? Did that answer Stan's question? <laughs> I, I hope I hope so. It's sort of, uh, but then obviously only Stan can answer that. Um, but I, my feeling was almost a little bit like Will of the Wisp. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the sort of the sense I got. Lovely little bright sparks. <laughs> yeah, and it's and because some of the the AI that we bring in. Um, is actually good for us is actually it's actually helpful for us because we're working with ai or that technology from the fifth sixth and higher dimensions and it's just about really using that discernment of which is the lower vibrations and which is the higher vibration which is working with us when i facilitate a healing i only work with what we have within us i don't bring things from the outside in because if you start counting on things from the outside in, then you're giving your power to that. So I really believe that everything we have within us, whether it's from our fifth dimension or multidimensional self, as long as it's of that highest vibration, then we have that ability to work with that. So when I work with, um, for example, archangels, I work with um, the highest aspect of you that is that archangel. I don't bring in the archangels from outside of us. I bring in that energy or that connection within you because we're all connected. We're all one and work with it that way. Yeah. Stan has actually come back and he said, 
yeah, I have people actively wishing me harm. Um, and I have not done anything for them to be so unkind. I still go back when I'm getting something between the ages of five and seven with Stan, as far as that goes. So it, you were probably bullied. I'm thinking you might have been bullied as a child, and that still needs to heal. That's just my first intuitive guess, as you know, as far as that goes, um, because a lot of times we hold that in us, and so that's if you were bullied as a child and you haven't healed that, really looked at that, and worked with your inner child, then it will it will show up in the 3d by the universe saying hey it's time to heal this what can we get how can we get your attention oh 100 percent agree with that one yes and because i do so much work with people's inner child and i've done so much work with my own inner child um and there's an element this is something that's cropped up a lot recently it's an element of that feeling of not feeling heard and not being listened to mm -hmm. Yep, that's that's another thing that comes up too because it's like not not being seen, and then yeah. sometimes that being seen is is a fear of being seen because when you were seen because I came from a you know a dysfunctional alcoholic abusive family so it's like I wanted to be invisible I didn't want to be seen I didn't want to cause waves as far as that goes so we have that that belief that if we're seen will be killed, will be harmed. And that may come from this lifetime or it may become from previous lifetimes. So it's something to look at as far as that goes. And so those are things I work with as well with my clients. Yeah. Stan has said, I'll revisit those ages. Thank you. And then Kyle, and Kyle has said, can you explain more about earth portals and the correlation with archangels? Wow. Okay, so I think they're two separate things. <laughs> um, so we'll talk about earth portals as far as that goes. There's portals that are just doorways and openings that can take you to different dimensions, whether they be lower dimensions or higher dimensions. I know sometimes when I'm out in nature, it's like I will just walk through it and it's like, whoa, and it's like my whole body shifts and I feel like weird. And it's like, wow, I just entered some kind of portal here. And it's like, so I have to really take a look at that. Um, and a lot of times it's a portal to a past life that happened on the land is where it is because I transmute energy and it's like, oh, here comes that bright light coming. Let's see if we can get her to do some stuff for us. It's like, so sometimes I have no clue what's happening until I'm in it. And then it's like, then I can, for me, I see and know. So sometimes it's like I know it's there and then through knowing it's there, I can actually see what's happening. It's like there's um when when I was up in Pennsylvania, um, there was a portal to um, a place that the Lenny Lenape tribe had been massacred. And I actually was in that lifetime. So that's how I had that connection to it. And I could point to the hill where I was massacred, where I was killed, where my life was taken. And it was like, and so there was a whole lot as far as that goes, as far as that goes. So that was that portal for me to get there. And then the other portal, which I was assisted, and we're going to bring in the archangels, I brought in the higher aspects of me that were Archangel Michael, Gabriel, and Metatron. And we created together a portal there for the land where they had me walk and, and set things. And, and actually there was like little, I had little um, crystals to create it that. And they had brought in some other higher aspects for the angelic team of those who didn't get a chance to cross over and cross into the light. So this was a beautiful portal of light in which these beings would see for miles and miles around that could come to, and if they chose, they could go into that light and the angel, the angelic realm, those higher aspects um, of Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Metatron were there to anchor that. But the angelic team was there to say, hey, you got any questions? What's on the other side? Da, 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 da. They were there. And that was permanently um, in place with intention and assistance from those higher aspects of me so that it could assist the planet 
I don't know if that's what Kyle was asking, but that's what, that's what showed up as far as what I, that might have been more, more than he wanted to know. <laughs> but then, okay, I'm just thinking of an experience that I had and I was, I was at a, I say it's a concert. It, 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 I don't know whether you've heard of a gentleman called Seeker Deer and Seeker's been on the program and he plays the didgeridoo and very many other instruments, lives in New Zealand, but is originally from the UK. And he's created a piece called Dartmoor. Actually, I think it's called Dartmoor Portal. Um, and Dartmoor is where I spent so much time as a child. I love going up to Dartmoor, especially to a place called Hay Tor. Um, and the, the, the big rocks there. And I used to climb this particular rock as a child. And I have done it as an adult as well. And while he was playing this piece of music, I found myself on the top of the tour, on the top of the rock. And we were going on about the, 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 the will of the wisp, the little lights. And I was aware of many, many little, it looked like little lights coming up from the earth. And it was souls being released at that point in time. Mm -hmm. But those souls that were trapped had also trapped a dragon, the earth dragon of Dartmoor. And once the soul's energy had been released, the dragon was also released. Yeah, it's so amazing and it's so magical. And it's like, and it's like you and, and many of you might be saying, well, how can that be real? And it's like that's the whole point, is if it is real. And and, and if you and if you it's you gotta get out of your head, be in your heart. And if it's like you question whether it's real or not, then magic's then magic stops with you. As far as that, if you say this can't be real, because then you are claiming that it isn't. But if you embrace it, embrace the magic, and even if you just use your imagination, it's like, wow, what is this? Oh, wow, cool. Oh, there's a dragon. Oh my gosh! And it's like, and allow your your heart and your imagination open, and then you will start to see things. And it's like, well, you might say it's just my imagination, but again, your imaginations are the seeds to reality. And we are we are in and out of different dimensions all the time. So I just love it when magic shows up like that. And, and I'm so grateful to be able to be to play in it. It's because it's like it's like to me, I just I just enjoy playing in it as far as that goes. But I do I do like I said, it's like I have my meta rules. It's like because I've learned to I'm only playing in those higher vibrations and I've always have those higher vibrations working with me if I have to go to a lower, a lower vibrational place that I have to work with the earth or work, you know, or work however it is, because there's things that I've been doing lately because of the, the way the energies of the planet where they have me going places where it's, it's a little scary. It's a little scary. So I need, I have my team and I have my warriors and I have those higher aspects fully protecting me. And, it's to be able for me to see what's happening. So do I recommend you guys jump into that? Oh, not really. Um, because that's something that I've been doing for years and it's, but there's the, the, the magic part where it's like, well, let me go see if I can find a high vibrational dragon. It's like, and use your imagination, see what that looks like. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Kyle says, I have a Hopi medicine e wheel, eel, sorry, I apologize, wheel up in the mountains um, here in Wyoming. Uh, that I think is a portal. Could you give me an easy kind of to heal the area? Um, that's exactly what I asked for. Okay. So what I would do is set your intention and... Um, I'm just getting what they're telling me. And when I mean they, it's like I'm connecting with source and it's like it's the information. So what they're saying, Kyle, is, is to get some salt because they want you to do this as far as that goes. And they just want you to do a trail of salt around the circle. And this is just to really, because that will help clear any density that's attached to it. And then just call in whoever you work with, your high vibrational deities, as far as that goes, they could be your ancestors or whatever, and ask to open a portal of light. And, and then use your, whether it's like, is this portal of light to assist others to go to the others? Or is this a portal of a light that can be utilized to bring love, divine love into the planet? 
and set that intention of whatever it is. And then just trust it and hold the space for it as far as that. Does that, I don't know if that helps or not, but it can be that simple. It doesn't have to be that complicated, but they did say, and also um, the sacred tobacco, the Indian tobacco, they said they, that you want, they want you to use that and just trust your instincts of where they want you to put that. Um, I've only used that a couple times, but they're, they're loud and clear as far as what they're showing me to utilize is definitely um, like a sea salt um, and the, the sacred tobacco. So however you're supposed to sea salt, I see in this around the circle, the sacred tobacco I see within it. So however you are guided to do that, trust it, just really trust it because there's no really wrong or right way if you are in your heart space and you're trusting. I'm wondering what's trapped there because he talks about healing the area. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and so if the salt and tobacco will help to to free whatever is trapped there. I very much work with sound energy. So I don't know whether you channel Kyle, but maybe sort of also just allow when you're doing what Julia has suggested, sort of see what sounds you can bring in or whether there's some specific music or an instrument you take with you a drum or something just yeah. to support the, the release of any souls that may be trapped in that area. Yeah. One of the things, cause when I moved into this location, it's like, um, that, that I'm living now, there was a really, it was an energy that was underneath, underneath the building. And they're just telling me to share this experience with you and then take whatever feels right to you. So, they said it was like a sleeping bear. It was hibernating. And they said, if I came at it from the top, I would wake it and I wouldn't be able to deal with those energies on my own. So they, what they wanted me to do is energetically come below it and ask the heart, work with, connect with the heart of Mother Earth and my team or my warriors and to bring the light with from in the earth and bring that energy down that heaviness or that darkness down so that it could release whatever's above it to go. And just through my intention, I worked with that energy. And what was really interesting, I met a woman um, like a year or so later and I told her that wild story. And she goes, Oh my gosh, my dad and I noticed that when it's, she goes, when was that again? I said, that was like October in that year. And she goes, we noticed a shift. We actually felt a shift in the planet because she lives like four blocks, five blocks from here, 10 blocks, whatever. But she actually felt the shift. And I was like, whoa, how cool is that? So it's real. So if you're mm. guided, if you're guided to bring those higher vibrations of you, Kyle, underneath to be able to bring it down, but they're definitely saying the salt as far as that goes and the tobacco to be able to utilize that. So, and, and then I just go and I trust from there as far as that goes, but make sure that you are fully protected and you are fully grounded when you're doing this, as far as that goes, being grounded is really important. Um, yes, we want to be in those other realms, but we still need to be connected. Um, and being grounded enables us to hold additional light a very high vibrational light. It's like, I use this um, story is like, so say the neighbor's power went out and they want to, they have a generator, but they need to plug it in to your house. Are you going to use a toaster cord to plug that generator in? That's going to, that's going to like blow the, the generator, blow your circuit board. And now two houses without power, as far as that goes. You want to use a heavy duty grounding cord. So you want to make sure that you're, when you're plugging that light in, that energy in, you're really grounded because then you can hold so much power and so much energy. Otherwise, when you're not grounded, it wackadoodles, that's my favorite word today, wackadoodles the body so that you're not in your body and you're, and you can't, and you can't really have control over your, over your own energies as far as that goes. This, so that's, that's, those are my stories. <laughs> well, I, some friends and myself, um, we went up to, um, it's Old Serum, which is 
is not far from Salisbury Plain and Stonehenge. And it's, an, it's a very old site. It's where the original cathedral was situated, but it's, 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 but it's much older than that. And we just felt we had the need to go there to clear energy there. And we did that. And it was a very cold February day. And we again, we were using the sound energy, but as a circle of us. And we also took, and another time, we also took energy to Stonehenge. But after we'd been to Old Sarum, a friend of mine who drove past there regularly and always felt the energy, she, she always felt horrible as she drove past the entrance. She drove past it not long after we'd been and she said, I could feel the difference, the work you've done there. Yeah, it's magic. And I just love it when, when spirit calls me to, to do stuff like that and to work with others. And yeah, yeah. We, we've got somebody who's sort of wishing to remain sort of um, anonymous. I was told once that I had a time lock on my third eye. Is it still there? And what is a time lock for anyway? Well, from what, the, and I'm just saying what they're telling me. So a time lock is to keep your third eye from fully functioning as far as that goes. So let's just go in. Can you just tell me if this person's male or female? Male. And maybe they're, and their first initial. Well, I believe male. <laughs> just their first, their first initial, if you can give me that. Uh, it's S. Okay. So there's a cord that goes to a past life that's coming in through the lower part, that, that soft spot in the black of your neck, and it's attached to your third eye. So you have the keys to this time lock. They're just hidden within your coding. So through your intention, there's three keys. And you want to start with the top lock, the top keyhole. And you click that right. And then the lower, you click that left. And the center, you just push all the way in. And now it's opening for me, the way I see it, it's opening like um, an egg, like a, one of those nesting eggs. And it's taking these layers off of your third eye. So just see, know, or feel that happening. Whoa. And we're just asking for that to dissolve. And we're taking that cord that's been feeding that time lock and we're bringing in the higher vibration of you that is Archangel Michael. And he's going to take his beautiful platinum dagger and he's coming down the back of your spine, starting at your crown and just running that down and cutting any cords that are still feeding that. And as he gets to your root, he's flipping that, that beautiful dagger. And now it's permeating a beautiful platinum gold. And there's streams of beautiful fuchsia in there up through the back of your chakra system to seal that so that those cords can't be reattached. They're saying to drink lots of water. Like if you're drinking only a quart a day, you want to double that. I drink actually a gallon of water because you're just really going to release a lot of stuff through this right now. Whoa. Okay. All right. Whoa. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we say with these programs, they are what they are. And folks, if there's anybody listening to the recording of this and this resonates with you, just take take from this program what feels right for you. It's not restricted to, to one person. This is this everything that we share is about sharing with everybody. So and and this person says, um, um, all right, I feel that on my neck, and then oh well, tell me what what you see. He he. Um, are you still there, Julia? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, good. I thought I had a horrible feeling we'd lost you for a minute. Um, so, but also the questions come in: Are chakras portals? Okay, so their their energy, their energy. This is the way I see them. Okay. 
these are energies and they they have portals attached to them sometimes like one of the things that i'm t um i have that's coming up i'm doing a a quantum healing and clearing and there's this this portal that's attached to your past life that's actually feeding fears into it so it has to be re um aligned or recalibrated so that you can actually get knowledge from it instead so i don't necessarily see the chakras as portals but they are they could be considered doorways so yes if you go down that road they could be portals um i've just never really labeled them that way because it's just the way we label stuff as far as that goes so however your interpretation of because it, it's like i know with my soul star chakra that's a doorway to a higher vibration so yes that's a portal to a higher vibration so it's it's just however you want to see the energy so to speak and you want to make sure that you're keeping those portals or those chakras or those energy centers clear and healthy and running um in a healthy in a healthy way so that if there is anything that is a lower vibrational portal that's attached or a dysfunctional portal that portal that's attached to them is to be aware of that i hope that answers the question that with all of it it's about our intention isn't it yes yes our, our intention and our belief our intention and our belief yeah and if, if the intention is always with love, with with highest good, and staying detached from the outcome, so that we can allow what is for each individual's highest good, and, and allow them, allowing everybody to have that choice. Right, and the outcome is 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 by detaching from the outcome and what what how i like to say it is like we might ask for something and we think it has to show up a certain way yeah. so we're in conclusion so it's like we have this hallway and it's like we think it has to look this particular way and we only have one door at the end of the hallway and if we don't make it to that doorway it's never going to happen because that's the only way we're going to see it but if you say how else is this possible what is this possible for me to make this shift and allow the universe to open all these other doors for you there are possibilities beyond what you can fathom out there of how something's going to show up for you oh absolutely and it's being open mm -hmm. and trust being in flow yeah and being in divine trust i i go it's like there's times when it's like wow you had me working on this i'm not not i've never done this spirit it's like it's like you really want me to do this so it's like i'll go into my root chakra or my foundation and i'll flood it with divine trust and flow and then i just trust it and i believe it and it's like i'll amp up my belief program it's like okay this is like outside my wheelhouse but it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna believe in this and it's like and then i and then that opens up the possibilities and then more magic happens and i'm still i'm there's so many times i'm flabbergasted by what shows up in my life and how it shows up and it's like i'm so grateful that i stay in that conceptual thinking as opposed to linear thinking and just allow the concept to happen without having to know all the steps of how it happened. Oh, it, it is trust, trust. Mm -hmm. I then all the way along with all of this, all I've ever done is just trust. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm right there with you because it's like, like when I've moved and Spirit says, "Oh, we want you to sell your house, quit your job, and move." I'm like, "Oh, well, that feels interesting," but it's like. They have that too <laughs> yep they, so but it's like i end up in a place where i my physical body has healed i get to um embrace my art so it's like wow if and where would i be if i just didn't trust i would be yeah. stuck in that little place where i was so unhappy as far as that goes even if i would physically still be here because that the it was taking its toll on my physical body so it's like i just really if it it's like i really trust but but i if it feels light if it feels right you know and if you have to use a pendulum to, to say is this better or use your body to do muscle testing however it gets to the point where you learn how to really trust yourself yeah whatever that takes and that looks different for different people yeah absolutely we're, co we're coming to coming to the end and thank you for those of you that have actually sort of shared and asked questions because that's lovely 
Um, it saved me thinking of them. No, it's important that everybody gets what they need. <laughs> um, is there anything that you feel that we haven't touched on that you would like to, to add before we close? Well, I think it's really important to ground. Um, it's important to come up with um, a clearing because you want to clear any outside entities or outside influences. I like to visualize, sometimes I'll visualize like a blue diamond waterfall coming down and the little diamonds cutting things off. I have a YouTube channel that has different processes that are really simple to follow to do that. And then it's like there are beliefs, um, whether you shield or you don't shield. I'm a high level empath. And for me to function, I require shields. So for me, it's like if you it's like and you want to refer to your shields like a door, you know, it's like so. When you're, if you live in a high crime district, so to speak, I hate to say it that way, do you lock your doors? <laughs> That's the same way as a shield. So it's like if I'm in a high energy place that has heavy energies, then shielding is really important for me. If some people don't require it, some people think that it encourages other things to come in as far as that goes, because you're, that's your belief system. But I've lived my life without even knowing what shields were. And I was never, I was unhealthy and I was, I wasn't, but once I was able to shield and, and clear and ground on a regular basis, it made a huge difference in my physical, emotional bodies. So yeah. that is something that I would love people to do, you know, because that ties in with the portals and the implants as well. Yeah. Yeah. I ground roots down every morning, every evening. Yeah, um, sometimes in between. <laughs> yeah. I also I also actually put my branches up to source, create a great mystery as well. So it's just like I've got the energies coming in from top and bottom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, I don't do things by halves. And you know, Pink Bubble of Love, Archangel Shamuel, Michael's Deep Blue Cloak of Protection. You know, there are many things that people can do that there are protection that supports them. And it right. doesn't stop you from experiencing the things you're meant to experience. Absolutely. I like it. I like to use the thing like it's like, oh, I'm in a video game. It's like, oh, look at all these protection shields. What does mine look like today? And I play with it. I play with the energy yeah. of it. Sometimes I make them like I want to have a rose garden as my shield with little hidden thorns so they can pick the flowers. But if they try to go deeper, they get a thorn, you know, or a, a nesting, a nesting um, doll which has all the layers of the rainbow in it or the rays in it, you know? So it's just, you can play with that, but it's, it really comes down to trusting and believing that it's working, you know, yeah. as far as that goes, that's, that's, and the attention that you want. Yeah. And, and it, it is a daily thing. It isn't a, it isn't a matter of, I can do it once. Yes. There are th certain things that you can set an intention for. Um, I have this thing that, Every time I hear a siren vehicle, whether it's an ambulance, a fire engine, a police car, it doesn't matter because I don't have to see it. But I hear that siren and it's I just say Archangel Raphael. And I'm, I've set the intention that when I ask Raphael and his angels support what is going on with anybody that may be ill or injured and the people helping them. So there are the things you can set intentions for. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Um, and you can keep it nice and brief, so you haven't got to do the full spiel every time. Yeah, one, yeah, because once you like, once you have the steps of what it was, it's like, like I do the blue waterfall. It's like, okay, run my waterfall, ground down, connecting to the heart of the earth, and then it's like, oh, I'm just going to do my rainbow shield, and I'm done. Yeah, as far as that goes. And then, like, if there's anything like in the evening, you know, or in the morning, because that those are two prime times. Because when you travel at night is then I take a deeper look and say, okay, have I opened any portals up? Have I brought any implants in, whatever this is? And then I must spend special, more special attention on those at that time. Yeah. So there is so much we can do to support ourselves. Um, we don't have to look outside. Absolutely. Uh, uh, find, find what works for you. And that's the most important thing, really, isn't it? Yeah, there's no one there's no one right way. If somebody says it's my way or the highway, I would go take the highway because <laughs> yes. 
because it's it's like and if anybody says oh i i'm going to heal you i would still take the highway because nobody heals you you heal yourself as far as that goes so oh, absolutely. there's so many different ways so it's like it's like each client for me is like i never have a preconceived notion of what it looks like when i work with somebody it's like i connect with their source and my source and i allow source to work through me to give me that information that's what i mean i've cleared and worked on myself because I don't have attachment to whatever shows up because it's like some things that show up are pretty interesting. I'm like, wow, I wonder where that's from. And it's like, I just trust that. And I've learned to trust it with, you know, my clients as well. But it's like, and if they aren't feeling comfortable that way, I said, well, let's look at it from a different way. How, what about this? Does this, do you feel better with this? Oh yeah, I, that works for me. So I just am always open to what spirit shows me as far as the possibilities go and give them the information to empower themselves so that's that's how i work as far as that goes yeah and and and, and i think the majority of people do and if you've got somebody that isn't necessarily working with that amount of integrity then you have to choose whether you stay or whether you leave mm -hmm. so it, it's julia thank you so much i am so sorry we lost your video I really am, but at least we could still hear you. Yes, and I would love to come back again and play in this energy with you, Sarah. This was joyful. And I'm just grateful to have been able to be a part of your show. So thank you for having me. Oh, it's a real pleasure. And Julia will be back with us on one of our Today's Conversations programs next month. And we're going to, it's going to be um, a program on light language. And that's going to be the second one of our programs on light language, because the, ne the first one is actually next Wednesday. But it's next Wednesday morning here in the UK at 7.30 a.m. What am I doing to myself? Um, because our guests... Janine Savia and uh, June Laffey are in uh, New Zealand and in Australia. And we are going to be talking about what is light language. And then when Julia joins us on the 24th of um, February, that will be another UK evening program. <laughs> um, we will be, be taking an, a further look at light language because of uh, Julia and Chessie Roberts have come different, th there's different aspects to light language and we wish to talk about and share about them all. So hopefully you'll look at joining, well, maybe not joining us live for next week's if you're in the States, um, but you'll look for the recording of that um, and you'll join us um, in February for, for Julia's, when Julia joins us with Chessie as well. So thank you very much, folks. Take care, be safe, stay well. Julia, thank you again. It's very thank much you. thank you to those of you who've your lovely comments. Um, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you again. Julia, we'll be in touch, I have no doubt. Take care, folks. Bye.